Well, hello friends, Mark Martella here for Mark's Money Matters, where I help you break your addiction to credit and bring some sanity to your finances. Well, today what I want to talk about is, does the fact that you have credit cards, use credit cards, does that cause you to spend more money? Uh, and, you know, at first you might say, well, yeah, maybe of course it does, but uh, I wanted to know if there was any really any any scientific research out there uh, about it. And of course, there are some studies, some interesting studies, and I'm going to share that with you. Uh, but first, I want to tell you something that that I learned today that was really scary, and uh, is actually a breakfast meeting I went to yesterday at the Charlotte County Chamber of Commerce. And one of the speakers there uh, was uh, Laura Steiner, who was head of uh, tourism for Charlotte County. And she was telling us about some of the amazing numbers of people coming here to Florida again and visiting and the uh, tax revenues that, that it generates. But the scary part is that the, some of the tracking uh, things that are out there now and if, if, if you're like me, I'm sure all of you have done this, you might do a search for a certain product. It could be sneakers, it could be a book, whatever. And you searched it maybe on your phone, and then you get home on your laptop and you open up Facebook, and all of a sudden you start seeing ads for that particular product popping up on a totally different device. Well, with that same type of uh, theory, uh, it happens with traveling. And, and what she shared with us is that if someone does a search for, you know, wanting to stay here in the, uh, the, the this area here in, in Southwest Florida. Um, they come, say, from Michigan, uh, and they did the search from their home, and then they travel down here. They have the ability to track that person. Now, they're not going to, she said, they're not going to know the exact person, but pretty close to it, that someone in that particular town in Michigan traveled down here, and when they traveled, that's scary. Think about that. And although the exact information of who that person is isn't uh, available to her, you know, it's, the information is available to somebody out there. Uh, and again, just more of the information that, look, if you're, you know, people get so upset about, you know, the, the, the breach of their privacy and maybe the loss of their social security card, by going on the internet and doing searches and doing anything, you've lost your, your right to privacy. There, there should really be no expectation of, of privacy when you use the internet. So just keep that in mind uh, you know, for future reference and, and where we're going. But I sort of, sort of digress from uh, today's topic. So again, today's topic, uh, what I'd like to address is, you know, does a credit card just cause you to spend more? And look, if you have any questions throughout this show, just pop them up here and I'll, and I'll do my best to, uh, to answer them. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, let's start with, uh, really one of the, uh, uh, first studies that, that I discovered. And, uh, in that study, uh, what, what, what was happened is, uh, a, a professor up in, uh, MIT. Now, when you hear these numbers, these numbers are from 1986, but they did an experiment and they were offering two different tickets, uh, to, uh, MIT. Uh, MBA students and one ticket was to a uh, Boston Celtics uh, Miami Heat game. It was the last game of the season and uh, the Celtics needed the win to make the playoffs. Uh, they were third row balcony seats. Uh, the other tickets they were offering and these were going to be auctioned off were for Red Sox tickets uh, to go see the Blue Jays and as a Yankee fan I I wouldn't take free tickets to see the Red Sox unless they were playing the Yankees, but those were the two tickets. And they, 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 the groups were told in one particular case they could only use a credit card to pay, and in the other case, uh, they could only use cash, and they were to place a bid. Well, the, the results are pretty, uh, pretty conclusive as to how a credit card uh, increases your spending. So with regard to the, the Celtics tickets, the people who were placing 
their bids. And again, I want to remind you, these are 1986 prices. But the uh, the NBA students who were placing their bids for cash for the Celtics Heat game was the average was twenty eight dollars and fifty one cents for cash. For credit, the average auction price was sixty dollars and sixty four cents. Doing the math quickly, that's a hundred and thirteen percent increase between cash and credit. When we go to the Red Sox tickets for uh, again bleacher seats in the beginning of the season in April, not highly desirable. For cash, they're offering nine dollars and two cents, and for credit, the credit card payers were offering fifteen dollars and ninety-two cents. Again, a seventy-six percent increase just because of the means of payment. Um, so there, there's one study that shows the increase of people's willingness to to spend more just because they're using a credit card. Um, a, a more interesting part of this study uh, was where they placed logos, uh, credit card logos, on, um, uh, you know, in the area where transactions were made, and they did it in connection with a United Way uh, project. And just having those logos there, even if people were using different means of payment, it showed an increase in the amount that people were willing to donate just by having those logos there. So think about that, you know, when you. Uh, go into a store and you see the logos of what they accept. It has multiple reasons. I don't want to give you notice that they do accept credit cards, but again, it's acting on you psychologically to probably spend more money in that store and to use that card. Well, basically, from my research and researching other studies, what they show is that you know, shoppers make larger purchases when they go to department stores when they're using credit. And again, in, in my past episodes, I've warned you that, you know, when they're giving you that, what well, seems like a no brainer offer to sign up for a credit card uh, when you're uh, checking out because you'll get 10% off. What they don't tell you at the time is that their interest rate is probably 22 to 29% interest. So that 10% they're giving you is just a tease to manipulate you to sign up for it, especially if you don't make it paid off uh, in, in the 30 days. Uh, studies have also shown that when people are using credit cards, they give larger tips in restaurants. And one other problem is when people are using credit cards, they don't keep track. They don't remember what, uh, they spent their money on, uh, you know, in, in, in a very short period of time. So it's, um, it can it can cause you to spend a lot more money, uh, and and these studies show that. So, um, again, yeah, I'm just trying to check here for any questions. Uh, make sure that's muted. Um, and uh, so again, if you have some questions about getting out of credit card debt, you know some systems that I have my five steps uh, financial sanity solution uh, that you can find. Uh, on my website uh, for Money Matters. It's just markmartella.com. Uh, you can learn my five-step financial sanity solution by listening to uh, my uh, podcast and radio show number 13 uh, lays it all out. I also have a lot of free resources there. So again, I encourage you to go there. And again, if you have questions, you can email me at mark at markmartella.com. And if you have a particular topic. So Again, why do we spend more money because we have plastic? Well, again, it's something I've talked about before, the money illusion. And what the money illusion does is we don't really have that sense uh, of the friction of pulling out the wallet and taking out the cash and seeing how much cash we have left in there. Um, you know, that's why casinos use chips. Again, they're all the same size. You don't make that connection. Uh, and what's really scary is using the phone. You just swipe the phone. Don't do that. Don't activate that. And, and I haven't activated it on my iPhone and I'm constantly getting reminders. Hey, you haven't fully set up your phone. Yeah, I set up a phone for what I need. Uh, so again, don't use that convenience uh, because it's just a way to make it even seem more like you're not spending money by just waving your phone in front of some from scanner. Um, the other things that banks do to, again, manipulate you, to get you to spend more is they offer quote unquote free miles or rewards 
points. There's no, the only rewards are to them because they're inducing you to spend more money. Uh, and you try to justify it. Well, I'll spend a little bit more money on this because I'm going to get that reward. Well, the only way it works, the only way it works is if you were to pay off everything at the end of the month. And 60% of credit card users always have a balance. Uh, and obviously a large, a large amount of them uh, are just paying the minimums. And that's where they make their money. And, and that's where, you know, if you're paying 22, 23, 24%, when you look at what you're paying and at the end of the year, the money you're wasting uh, is, it, it can, be, can be mind boggling. And, and part of the problem, another part of the psychological problem, the manipulation that they do is there's a big difference when you pull out your wallet uh, to pay $5 for a cup of coffee when you only have $10 in your wallet. $5 cup of coffee seems more expensive versus uh, if you pull out a credit card that you know you have a $10,000 limit on and spending a $5 cup of coffee. Uh, there's this psychological uh, shift that, you know, I, I can pay this with my, my future earnings because, you know, they say I, I can have up to a $10,000 credit limit and they wouldn't give me that $10,000 credit limit if they didn't think I can pay it. Well, maybe if that was the only credit card you had, that would work. But when you have five credit cards, all at $10,000 or more, uh, and you only make $50,000 a year and you have $50,000 of credit, that's a problem. Uh, and again, the best way I know of to avoid getting into that spending uh, cycle and getting into that black hole of debt is simply by not using your credit card. Use cash. Uh, if you are going to use a card, use your debit card uh, and keep track of everything. Again, one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself is to have a budget. And again, if you go to my website, uh, markmartello.com, I have a free resource, the ultimate budget tool. You go down there, download it, create your budget and track it. You'll gain control of your finances. So again, to, uh, to view uh, any of my prior videos, my, my podcasts, you can go to the Money Matters website. It's www.markmartello.com uh, and you'll see all the, res the resources there. You'll see these past shows as well and something new that I'm doing it's called a two minute tip and we're gonna throw those out randomly during the week and just give you a quick tip that that I've discovered or uh, that I've learned that have helped help me and help my clients uh, take control of their finances so again uh, I'm Mark Martella and until next time remember you have the power to choose to live a debt-free stress-free life have a great week